Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're going to be doing our beginner's guide for the game to get you pointed in the right direction for starting at global launch. So let's get into it. First of all, we'll just take a look at the overworld. And this is basically your main part of the game is going to be in the overworld doing the questing, at least in the early days anyway. Now you have your map and you can see here, you know, this account I've neglected a little bit over the last few days and I haven't gone and collected everything in the world. Now on your map, you have a bunch of different things. Essentially anything there, you can just click on it and auto pass path to it enemies chests all that sort of stuff um, we have this symbol down here which is uh, used to represent puzzles where you can get summons and stuff like that but that's pretty much the basics these are going to be teleport points these are going to be co-op battles so you can queue for co-op and stuff like that but anything you miss along the way once you've gone through an area you can look back at it and you can travel back to it now essentially what you're going to be doing most of the time is just clicking this little text below the map that is your quest and it's going to auto path for you now you can change which quest your pathing by clicking that button and you can do side quests and you can just click the, the crosshairs to track or you can do town quests. Definitely do your town quests because these give you the hero essence which is going to be a big one for limit breaking your characters. I really need to get around to doing more of these but you guys get the gist. They're going to be important but the main thing you want to be progressing is your main story. Once you're stuck on that then you start looking to other things and now general controls. Use your finger on your phone. Use WASD around here. F is your interact button. It's pretty basic. There's nothing mind-blowingly complicated about playing in the overworld. Now, moving on past that, the next thing we have tied into the overworld and like core function is going to be your AFK stages and loot. So idle game, you're going to have AFK loot that generates over time. You can get instant rewards as well. Make sure you do these towards the end of the day, especially in the early progression, because then you'll be at further stages. And the stage you're on over here is going to determine how much AFK loot you get. And also along the way, you get like gems, summons, chests of gear and stuff like that. And these are going to be the main stages that you play through. If you played AFK Arena, think of this like AFK Arena's core campaign mode and then the the overworld and the questing as like sort of a story mode on top of that this is your main progression your afk stages where you are stuck at in campaign is going to be catered towards this so this is something you definitely want to progress and keep as progressed as possible because one you can see here i need to complete afk stage 645 to keep playing through the campaign but also to increase your afk loot which is going to snowball your account faster so this is the next thing you really want to stay on top of and that's sort of the main core game modes. Now we do have additional game modes, but before we go into that, I want to talk about heroes and stuff like that over here in the Resonating Hall. So basically the way they do this game, I really like it. You've got the hero hands of resonance. So essentially what this is, it's your top five characters. These are the only ones you level. Uh, you can see here that I've got her at 160, everyone else is 150. And essentially these characters can only be a maximum of 10 levels apart. And all your other characters go to the lowest level of your top five characters. So at the moment I have 160, everyone else is 150. So all of my characters get to be 150. If you want to swap which character is highest leveled, you can just literally do this and you can swap it. Now he's 160, now she's 160, so on forth, so, so on and so forth. You get the gist. So especially for like looking at faction towers later on and stuff like that, you know, if I'm going going in and I'm doing a light bearer tower, you know, I'll, I'll go and put Vala as my DPS and make her 160, stuff like that. So it is really intuitive for that. As for leveling up, you standard leveling up is going to need um, gold and experience but then you're going to need hero essence for limit breaks like I said and that is going to be your main bottleneck so limit breaks is every 10 levels so from 10 to 11 20 to 21 so on and so forth that's when you're going to need that and that's where it's going to be important now as for like upgrading your character's ascension there's two different things you're going to require one is going to be dupes of the character that we're going to get through summoning uh and the other one is going to be uh if we have someone here yeah acorns which at certain stages you will need acorns i'll do a full ascension guide in the future as well uh but just know that you know you will need dupes of characters to keep upgrading them and that will apply when we get to the wish list but that is the basic function now if you want to check your character's skills we come over here and we go to skills and this is where you're going to see the skills now at base you get three skills that you can check now if you want a basic description and you're like not getting too hardcore and you just want to understand what it is like you hit the simple button over here and it's like she summons mr kyla to assist in battle that's the basics but then here you're going to get your multipliers exact effects and stuff like that if you go on to the full versus the light mode uh then over here at legendary plus we unlock hero focus which is normally just like a passive stat boost and mythic plus you can unlock your exclusive equipment which is 
is where you get a lot of benefit on a lot of characters and then you can up upgrade the exclusive qu equipment through here uh, through this menu as well but going back over here once again exclusive equipment is mythic plus and then supreme plus you're normally just getting another stat increase and such like that so mythic plus is going to be like the core fundamental change for a lot of characters and that's going to be like your main limit break to get the functionality of them supreme plus is for like you know getting that absolute max potential out of them so that's what we're looking at over there the other thing we do have with our characters is affinity now you can give lifts lift, uh, give gifts if i could speak properly and get extra summons along the way uh, in general i stop once i get to 1300 because it's just too expensive i'd rather get all my characters to 1300 for efficiency of getting uh, your um the summons out of this and then look to increasing them later you'll see i am above 1300 that's because i gifted her up there and then from using them and stuff in combat you do gain extra affinity as well and you'll see here she got plus two affinity for clicking on her essentially and you can do all these little things like that as well but affinity is just another way to get a few extra summons as well equipment now equipment in this game is fantastic you'll get chests along the way that you can open you can get specific pieces it shows you which one's going to give you the biggest benefit but sometimes if all your main dps are say rangers even though this is only giving me a 20 level increase you know 35 maybe i want to pick the 20 that's very very niche in what you're doing and stuff like that but when we take a look at it your gear is not character specific it's faction specific so if you look here all these characters all my support characters get the support gear that i have equipped so you don't have to be making sets of gear for every character just get gear this is more like a stat stick sort of thing you get gear over time you equip your best gear all the characters of that class get it so on and so forth and then you have to make the decision on crafting gear on which characters you want to craft gear for and stuff like that now i'll, I'll do more guides in the future on like stats and stuff to aim for but in general like haste is going to be a great thing to aim for because it gets you your ult faster and stuff like that but that's a bit more nuanced and stuff like that in the future then we have artifacts now artifacts you just basically unlock along the way and you get upgrades for them along the way they have differing effects when you jump into battle uh th there's, a, there's a bunch of different ones there's no one best artifact in my in my opinion i think it's situational and stuff like that but we'll go more in depth in that in future videos but you do have artifacts that you equip in battle and that's basically it for heroes so let's go in and let's take a quick look at the combat because i want to show you guys what we have going on in combat in general so i i've done a team guide whether it's up already i don't know but <laughs> i've already recorded it i don't know when i'm uploading these in order but basically your team in general you're going to be having like a tank a healer and a dps and then your last two slots are flex spots you can run double tank you're double healer double dps maybe more of an offensive supported type character it just depends but in general you can place your characters any way uh you want in here uh just try and keep that stable this is where you go ahead and pick your artifact this one is a control one where the back three enemies are going to get controlled periodically uh, and then you can just go ahead and hit battle now you can do different positionings like I, I sometimes run like a split positioning like this but the enemy team being all grouped up i kind of tend to lean towards these sort of positionings uh something like this and that's going to be my sort of staple positioning layout. Uh, then you go into battle. Basically, you, can, you have the two controls you have is control the speed and also control auto versus manual. Now, when you're on manual, you can choose when a character ultimates and also the area of their ultimates for the characters that have like a targetable ultimate. So let me just see here. So Thorin, you can choose which where, where he's going to aim his ultimate to see which character he's going to hit. So I'm going to do it there so that he's going to hit that Iron. Uh, Rowan, he's another one. I can choose where I run to to give uh, everyone some coins. And uh, we can go ahead and do that. Boom. Uh, and then for instance to see is another great one because she can summon mr kyle anywhere on the field and sometimes playing this manually uh, because the ai with something like this is always going to try and make her hit as many enemies as possible but if there's annoying enemies where you're going to hit less enemies but they're more vital ones to control you can target things like that to hit them but in general that's the basic look we're, we're doing i just leave it on auto if i think a stage i can i'm stuck on that i can clear with manual then i will swap it to manual and play around with that but in general you can feel pretty safe to leave it on auto most of the time you can also check battle results for healing damage taken healing and also damage dealt uh which is fantastic and then if we go back here the next thing i want to show you guys is also our faction bonuses which obviously here we have faction bonuses so we've got different factions having pri uh advantage Wait, my head's in the way isn't it oh we have different factions having different uh advantages over different factions and then we also have bonuses based on the amount of characters you deploy from a faction from the same faction over there so that is what we're looking at in combat so let's bounce out of that one 
and let's jump into let's go into the core battle modes uh so here we have dream realm now dream realm jump into this every day we get the the bosses rotate through and they change every day and you get to jump in and attack them every day make sure you click the ladder every day as well because it gives you your rewards based on your result for the previous day on that boss uh and yeah that that's pretty much it i'll go more in depth into boss guides and stuff like that in the future but just jump in and do do at least one attack on every boss every day so that you are getting some rewards then you can min max that further as you want uh we have the the arena standard stuff in the arena you get weekly rewards which i just got there because we've just hit the weekly reset um you want to challenge as well early game i recommend doing refreshes on arena tickets like once you use your five daily arena tickets um you can actually purchase up to five more i think or is it four daily tickets you can purchase up to five more something like that they're fairly cheap and early game it does give you experience and it lets you get more arena points quickly because when we look at the shop for arena you can get yourself some epic heroes including Cecilia, who is going to be most people's early game sort of main dps so that's arena nothing crazy about it. it's just versing the ai of other players players teams battle drills i'm not going to go through that that's a guild feature make sure you get into a guild as soon as you unlock it as well while we're talking about it get into a guild because there's a lot of features in the guild that give you a lot of guild points and that's how you're going to get celestial and hypergene heroes which become very important so just get yourself in a guild is the main part and i'll talk about uh battle drills in future labyrinth this is going to be the uh the roguelike mode now as you can see here we've got different difficulties that you need to reach different requirements to do uh and as you go on you can see here i can do most of them i've really let this slack but obviously eventually i'm going to have to obtain mythic or higher tier heroes four times to be before i can enter that and clear previous difficulties this is just a standard road like it's not that hard to be honest to get your rewards and it's just a good source of summon income over there uh then we have the legend trial think of this as faction towers these are each each day is going to have different ones available and friday saturday you have two of them available and then sunday you have all of them available and you climb these the thing that these are going to give uh is summons uh also like ascension mats and uh, exclusive equipment materials uh and also if i I can see it i can't show you uh but there's also going to be the hero essence which you need for limit breaking so these are going to be very important to push as well but when you're doing these just make sure you bounce out to your heroes and if you have some higher level depending on what faction you're trying to do just click this button and swap around for instance you know if i'm doing if i'm gonna head it go ahead and do maulers i make od higher level so i can get more damage out of him stuff like that just try and min max that to get as high as you can because you do get some important resources over there Moving on from that, that pretty much covers the game modes. Honor Jewel is the only one remaining. This is like a draft mode. I'm not going to go too in-depth into this. Jump in and have a play. You'll figure it out. It's a draft mode. It's kind of like PvP where you verse other AI, but you don't bring your own heroes. You get drafted heroes and stuff like that. That's sort of like a big in-depth one for a whole video, but it's not a very important core feature. The rewards are okay, but the time consumption for this, this uh, mode versus the rewards is not crazy. So this is more one to jump in and play around with if you have some time and you want to have some fun. So that is our core game modes. Besides that, questing is something you always want to do daily quest make sure you do these every day uh once again these here the where you get essence from these on dailies it's based on your afk loot stage so leaving these to the end of the day in the early days is going to be nice because it'll allow you to stack up extra rewards that you can go ahead and uh, claim there guild uh we got guild quests once again you want to get into a guild you can get guild points each week through the guild quest which is fantastic because you're going to be able to buy heroes from the shop which we'll look at in a sec growth path this is just one you'll naturally grow through gives you some good resources over here um, just for basically doing general progression you will just continually unlock more levels of this and get more rewards and then we have growth trials these are like sort of achievements that eventually you'll get more stuff from and that's pretty much the basics to it also we got friends make sure you go ahead and get a full friends list send and receive every day and then you'll be able to get extra rewards through this chest and stuff like that so that is the basics of just about everything inside the game besides that we have the events tab come here every day you got different events there'll be a bunch of events go events going at launch including these ones uh that's probably not going to be there at launch but this one will be as well uh so that's what we have there and then the final thing i want to jump into is the mystic house emporium uh i'll do like a whole what to buy from the shop but this is where you're going to spend your general uh 
general gems, diamonds, to go ahead and get your discount summon every day. I just do that every day because it also completes a mission. Then this is where you're going to spend your guild points on Celestial and Hypergene heroes. Arena Store, this is where you can pick up some epic heroes. Dream Store, this is where you're going to pick up some uh, some elite heroes that are over here. Uh, and then Friendship, this is where you're going to get some gifts that you can go ahead and gift your, your characters to raise that bond to get yourself some extra summons. So the final thing, Mystic Collection, don't stress about this. This is more like achievements and it's just like a passive thing that happens in the background. You don't really need to actively do anything here. Just progressing through the game, we'll start unlocking things over there. And the Noble Tavern. So this is our summons. So we have Raid Up Banner which a character you're guaranteed to get them. If you get an epic hero, it will be that hero. It's a 3% drop rate over here at the stand and a 40 pity. This one over here is a 60 pity and we've got a 2.05 at the epics. Um, and this is like where you get all your summon tickets. This is gonna be the bulk of the summoning you do from summon tickets you get through the game. Epic, now th these are going to be rarer, but you do get these around the world and stuff, and these have a 30 pity, uh, and you have a separate wish list for these epic heroes, whereas over here on this one, after you do 30 summons, you will unlock this wish list, which you can go ahead and modify. I'll have a whole wish list video out as well. Uh, and then finally, we have Stargazer. Stargazer unlocks after you've done, I think it's total 400 summons on your account, and this is how you're going to go ahead and get Celestials and Hyper Genes, but this is much later on, and I'll do more in-depth videos about this stuff in the future. So that pretty Pretty much covers everything in the game to get you guys to understand the basics i tried to make it fairly quick so it wasn't too tedious but i think we still ended up taking like 15 to 20 minutes but that is everything core mechanic wise inside the game noble path is just a battle pass simple stuff like that so i didn't go through absolutely everything mail check your mail every day that's where your arena points come in but uh, yeah, I'm going to shut up now. Plenty of other videos coming. Plenty probably already on the channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.